This is hands down the worst character death that has ever been written in film history. So, a little backstory. Anybody familiar with this channel knows that I adore skins, more specifically the first generation of skins, but that's not what I want to talk about today, despite the comparisons that I will be making. As I'm sure you can tell, we're here to talk about the climax of the second generation, honing in on one of the series' most infamous moments, which you just viewed, the death of Freddy. Now let's begin with the scene itself before delving deeper into the wider skin storyline and how detrimental this moment is as a whole. The scene begins in decent enough skins fashion with an intentionally off-putting interaction between Freddy, Effie, and the future murderer John Foster, which transitions into a mini-dialogue between Freddy once again and Effie's mother. A touching moment designed no doubt to lower your defences as a viewer. The biggest issue begins soon after, however, when Freddy and Foster share a one-on-one, -on -one, and it becomes abundantly clear just how terrible and shallow a character this therapist is. John Foster is so one-dimensional, and it's especially clear in a show that is almost built upon the complexity of its characters, which I think is almost a huge issue with the second generation as a whole. The only quirk that John Foster has is that he's a weird creep who's awful at his job. Like, unbelievably awful. Like, there's no way the writers thought anybody could realistically invest themselves in a story where someone as blatantly unqualified as this would be able to secure such a dangerously influential position around children. Elizabeth and her mother have expressed dissatisfaction with my methods. It's perfectly understandable. I am something of a maverick. Additionally, the one-dimensionality of the second gen's main cast is somewhat exposed, starting with Freddy himself. A complaint much of the community has is that outside of his undying love and borderline obsession with Effie, there is absolutely zilch to Freddy's personality. He is easily one of the most boring characters of the entire franchise. Effie's flatness and dullness is also evident at the scene's beginning. She did indeed have her moments as a well-acted, suffering, drug-addicted, hedonistic young teenage girl, but for the majority of the series, she's much like this. No, I don't want him anymore, Freddy. Utterly helpless, a total shell of the dark personality she once was in the previous generation. Sorry, because I'm about to veer slightly off topic, but I really do need to explain my sheer distaste for second generation Effie. So just skip here if you'd rather not listen. So in one of the third season's opening scenes, this little bit of character building happens. Ems, come on, you loser. What's wrong with you? You're always lagging behind me. Why don't you wear decent clothes, you think? Right. You hate her. Who do I hate, Em? I'll let you know. Now, here are a couple comments regarding this moment. These little moments of Effie spotting things and noticing underlying dynamics between people is really what drew me to her as a character. She was in the thick of it, but also like a secret sideline spectator of life, both within and without. And that's definitely how teenage me felt at the time of watching the show. Effie be like, <laughs> while observing the personality differences between Emily and Katie. So basically, people really love to praise Effie's character for scenes like this one. I'm sorry, but this is all utter bollocks. There's no subtle judgement or perspicacious involvement in social standings and dynamics. That's all pretentious horseshit. One of the twins literally called the other a loser and verbally annihilated her in front of a huge crowd in front of the school. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that there might be an imbalanced power dynamic here. Silly plonkers. If you want subtle observation, like actual subtle observation, then look no further than the same character a generation earlier. Effie's first generation depiction where she helped Sid get back with Cassie and Tony get back with Michelle. And it was done so well that you might have even forgotten how involved she actually was in those relationships. Because she was smart about it and involved herself just enough to be sharp, slick and likeable as a character. Fundamentally, Effie is supposed to be a perspicacious character, but the writer's attempts to re-establish this part of her personality in the second generation fails horrifically, as the situation is rushed, artificial, lazy, and glaringly obvious. Just a bit shit. All this links to my initial point about her character being wanky in the second generation, which permeates right into the beginning of Freddy's final scene. Like, come on, that's not endearing, that's just fucking cringe. <clears throat> 
Sorry about that, let's get back to the death. As John walks up the stairs to establish the murder, Freddy switches from a big hard man who will stop at nothing to defend Effie Fuck off. To a bit of a pathetic pussy. PUSSY! Who doesn't even attempt to fight back at this crazy bitch who is literally about to end his life. This might have been a lot more forgivable if Freddy was this meek the entire scene, but the sudden contrast rids much of our investment as viewers. Fuck off. Like, is he not even going to fucking try and defend himself after chatting so much shit? <laughs> Furthermore, aside from failing horribly thematically in the small scope of the scene itself, it's also a disgrace in the grand scheme of the Skins franchise. For whatever reason, after Chris's big death in the second season, the writers sort of decided that it was necessary to kill off a major character every generation, which in my opinion is such a weak and lazy plot device that basically begs viewers to get emotional. One of the issues with this tactic is that right off the bat, from the first episode of the season, much of the experience becomes a I wonder which one of these characters is going to die game, which could actually be pretty interesting and work well when done correctly, but every character death post season 2 fails horribly. So I can only assume that this strange tactic plays a part in this flaw, partially due to the writers being forced to shoehorn in an unnecessary death. Chris's brain hemorrhage is built up from the introduction of his character. It's established that his brother died of an identical cause, and we see the disease slowly build and get more and more worrying as the show goes on, almost as if to represent the ever-growing darkness of the series. It actually felt as though the directors had a plan, which is something that should kind of be happening, like come on. When Chris died, the death was tactful and dramatic, acted brilliantly, and is such a pivotal moment for the series, as everything that proceeds after his death is almost centered around it. We see everybody's individual reactions to the death of their dear friend, and it's a wonderful outlet for genuine character development. The climax of this generation is a heartfelt speech about Chris that perfectly encapsulates what Skins is all about. Everything matters here. Things weren't just happening for the sake of it. Freddy's death cannot even be fucking compared to this amazing sequence of events. And the more I talk about it, the more it starts to genuinely annoy me a little bit. I don't even know how this shit was approved. It's the most blatantly, purely shock value dependent death I have ever seen in any form of film. And is exactly the moment I point to when explaining why everything after Generation 1 is a pack of bums. And we haven't even covered potentially the most offensive aspect of this death. Because unlike Chris's death, there is literally no reaction from any other character regarding Freddy. Even Effie, who has been written as being head over heels in love with the man, is completely ignorant of it. Nobody gives one. The generation ends with the cast just smoking in the shed, laughing, with absolutely no mention of their friend who was just fucking murdered in cold blood. I am so baffled as to how this made it past the clearing process. Did they have a ridiculously strict deadline or something? Are they all just stupid? Could they not be bothered? How can you be this shit at character writing? And before anyone mentions it, I do not count Cook's mini confrontation with Freddy's killer as an adequate resolution. It's not satisfying at all, and the team clearly couldn't be bothered to do anything with it. Hence the fade to black at his aggressive pounce towards him. <laughs> This is the type of thing that could be used as a cliffhanger for the next episode, where we view the remainder of the confrontation, and then see Cook inform the others of what the fuck just happened to him, as well as Freddy. But instead, the next episode is the new girl Frankie being made fun of for her outfit. WHAT THE FUCK?! Not to mention the scene itself, which is equally as amateur. The whole interaction is just so melodramatic and unsatisfying, and can't be defended as an appropriate ending to such a huge and influential series. It's a fucking disgrace. And the fact that this is the only mention of Freddy post-murder? Fuck me. What a shit show.